and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Today, Ukraine is taking difficult but necessary steps to modernize its civil service and to create efficient and transparent governance that meets the citizens' needs. Professional civil service is the foundation for successful implementation of all other reforms. The main goals of public administration reform, which has been implemented in Ukraine since 2016, are simplifying procedures for citizens, reorganizing administrative structures and implementing e-governance. So what specific results of the reform effort are visible by now and what still needs to be done? To talk more about this, we welcome in our studio today Grigor Viran. He's a former Minister of Public Administration of Slovenia. He's a key expert of the project Support to Comprehensive Reform of Public Administration in Ukraine. Hello and thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. So Slovenia, the country you uh, originated uh, in and you come from, started such a reform 28 years ago and the strategy uh, was changing over the years. Now, how can we take the experience of your native country and put it on Ukraine, if that's possible? Well, I think it's good for you to, uh, to follow the good examples of uh, European Union member states. Mm -hmm. uh, public governance is, is extremely important for the quality of life, for the living standard of citizens, for the business environment. And this is exactly, I mean, public governance, the quality of it is exactly what makes the difference between Switzerland on one side, for instance, mm -hmm. and Ukraine on, on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, change cannot happen overnight. If you want to to, to do this change, let's say, in, in, in five, in ten years, the best way is always to, good, to follow good examples. The examples of the best take... states, but also of transition states like uh, Slovenia. How long did it take Slovenia to fully implement the reform? Well, you never fully implement the reform because you have to, you have to reform and, and improve uh, all the time. Uh, but I would say that the main changes that, that transformed uh, public governance and public administration to a modern system which, mm -hmm. is, which serves the citizens and the businesses took something like 12 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. What would be your stance on Ukraine? Will it take longer? Well, uh, the reforms have uh, already uh, begun. Uh, the public administration reform strategy was uh, approved by the government in 2016, so there have already been some moves. Mm -hmm. um, it will take much more time, but I think that in, in seven to ten years you can become a country that can in this respect compare to, let's say, uh, Poland or Czech Republic and similar, if mm -hmm. you do the wrong, if you do the right steps. The right thing, yeah. okay. And the right thing, what do you mean by the right thing? Well, there are many things. Uh, if you are talking about uh, the services for citizens and businesses, uh, it is mainly about changing the philosophy of how a public administration, of how, how bureaucracy works. Right. It should be based, it's not rocket science, it should be based on common sense. So all the procedures, all the processes have to be simplified as much as possible. And public administration should design them uh, in, as we say, user-centric way. Mm -hmm. So take the perspective of the citizen or a business and see how a citizen would like certain procedure to be and then desi design this procedure according to the needs. Mm -hmm. Well, I have uh, a saying, basically it's your quote, uh, you said public administration reform is the basis of all reforms in Ukraine. It can be compared to a piano. If you want to play mm -hmm. a wonderful melody, you have to tune the instrument first. What did you mean by that? Well, I meant uh, now you elected a new president, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you elected a new Rada, uh, you have a new leadership, a new hope for for change, and I'm sure that they are all. They have they have big ambitions. They are well intended. They want to do reforms, but if they want to do reforms, they must first reform the uh, the machinery of government. Just like a composer or a pianist, uh, if he wants to play a nice melody, first has to has to tune the. Uh, the piano. That's the. That's what this metaphor is about. I totally agree. But what could be the practical steps of achieving this goal? Let me give you a, a couple of uh, examples. Um, for many bureaucratic procedures, you need dovitkas, right? right? You need certificates. You need to go to one office to take a dovitka, 
and then then take this Dovitka to another office when you get another Dovitka city. and so on and so forth. <laughs> right. So you act like a postman for the for the government. This is not how things are supposed to be. In okay. a, in a modern country, um, all the databases are interconnected. And when you come to a certain office to get to get a certain service, a social benefit or a permit, a license, whatever, if they need certain data, they don't ask you, a citizen, to go somewhere else and provide a certificate, a paper. Mm -hmm. They simply have access to this data. To the base. To, to the base. So one of the projects, we are somehow uh, suggesting the, the also the, the, the new president's office and uh, the future new government to um, to launch is uh, Bez Dovidok. So let's mm -hmm. get rid of all of all uh, Dovidkas. This is possible. And how do we provi provide all the official and administrative services with the needed data? Well, um, if you have, let's take an example of a well-organized country such as, transition country such as Estonia, for okay. instance. They have, <clears throat> also my country, Slovenia, we have very good databases. Uh, the data in those databases are accurate. These databases are interconnected. They're open, the access is open to all civil servants who need those data for their own, uh, uh, for their own purposes, for their own procedures. So if I, as a citizen, come to a certain counter and they need certain data, they don't ask it from me mm -hmm. because they already have it and I don't care whether this agency has it or some other agency has it. For me, the state is one, is one business, is one firm. I want the service from the state. I don't care who is responsible for what. They should arrange this data exchange in the back office. That's how it works. Okay, that's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. All right, now uh, <clears throat> there is a very popular trend going around called uh, city in a smartphone. Yeah, state in, smart in state smartphone. State in smartphone, yeah, yeah. what do you think about it? Well, I think it's a very catchy slogan. I think it shows that uh, uh, the new president puts uh, e-governance, e-government very high on yeah. the uh, list of political priorities. I think it's great for Ukraine. I think that uh, great things could be achieved under this uh, label. But I also think that um, it has to be done in a very thoughtful way and all the mistakes have to be, uh, have to be avoided. Um, I would, if there was one message to give, I would say the following, e-governance, e-government is not so much about IT, it's not so much about technology. Oh, technology is, about is, is available today. It's about philosophy, it's about mindset, it's about way of doing things, it's about uh, organization, it's about uh, processes, procedures. Again, one example, you can, you can, for example, if we stay with this Dovid, Dovidkas, um, you need a birth certificate, for instance, today for many procedures, right? For you or for your for your kids. Now, you can you can put birth certificate. You can make it an e-service so that you can apply for for birth certificate online. Okay. You can even put it on smartphone, but that's not the good solution. You know what is the good solution? The good solution is not to need it at all. I, in my country, I don't need a birth certificate. I don't need a birth certificate for my kids. Because the school or any other institution that needs data on, on, on their birth or, you know, our connections so that I can prove that or we can prove the connection father, son or mother, son and so on. Uh, it's these data are simply ac uh, accessed by, uh, by, uh, by, an, by the institution, by the civil servant. What I wanted to say is sometimes it's better than having a service on the smartphone or a procedure on smartphone is having no procedure at all. That's mm -hmm. what citizens really like, to get rid of administrative procedures, not only to get them on the smartphone. Here's the thing, if we do get rid of most of the administrative procedures, that will leave a lot of Ukrainian citizens out of jobs. How do we cope with that? Because there are a lot of, let me be fair, elderly women dealing with, let's say, birth certificates. Right. Yes. What do they do with their occupation once we get rid of the administrative um, service? I think this is a wrong way of thinking because if it was that simple that you can simply uh, open, give jobs to, to, to people, to citizens by opening some meaningless uh, you know, process or job in public administration, this would not uh, work. You need what you need in Ukraine is productive jobs. You need jobs in, in economy. 
you need jobs that create added value there that will increase your 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 national wealth your your gdp this is what you, you don't need meaningless jobs in public administration so of course the government must have a plan a program to let's say uh, cope with the redundancies mm -hmm. which such restructuring always produces yeah. I mean, when you digitalize a, a system, a, a public administration, for instance, for instance, of course it produces redundancies. It changes the structure of positions. You probably need, you will need less, uh, less employees with lower skills, and you will need new employees with higher skills. Mm -hmm. So the right. the answer is find the right jobs for for the people. Don't just create meaningless jobs. This is not the solution. Okay, and for the last question, and I have to ask you to be very fast while answering it, um, how do we divide politics and civil society? Uh, politics and civil society or politics and civil service? Civil service, this, yeah, civil sorry. service, yeah, I, 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 I knew it. Um, well, um, civil service must primarily be professional. So okay. this should be done through uh, merit-based procedures of recruiting, selecting civil service servants. Mm -hmm. This is very important. It's also very important to prevent any political, any government to fire people just for their political opinions or their political affiliation. When the government changes, this does not, does not mean that they can simply fire all the civil servants. Mm -hmm. This is not how it, what happens in, in, uh, in let's say, um, in modern countries. However, this does not mean that politics should have no influence on the civil service. It should have influence. I even I am one of those who even believe that when a new government comes, that they should have some flexibility when it comes to top managerial positions in public administration. So when a, when a minister comes to the ministry, of course he, he must give the chance to the existing managerial structure in the ministry to, to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. But if he's not satisfied, if he, he, if he thinks that he cannot realize his or her vision with this team, he must have the possibility also to change. But he cannot, what he must not do and what he cannot do is simply to bring people from the street, to put it this way, you know, partisan people with no experience, with no knowledge, with no, with no merit, with no skills, with no competence, and appoint them to high managerial positions. Mm -hmm. So there must be a very sophisticated, merit-based uh, procedure. Exactly. It's balance. all about balance. Like, every, like with everything in life. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. That was Gregor Viran. He's a former Minister of Public Administration of Slovenia and key expert of the project Support to Comprehensive Reform of Public Administration in Ukraine. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for the rest. Yeah.